as the country prepares for what will be a crucial election, the various political parties have made a number of promises, hoping it will entice voters into their corner. Now, the MPP and the NDC have made a number of promises in the agricultural sector, which is said to be the mainstay of the Ghanaian economy, employing a sizable number of Ghanaians. At an ISA organized uh, forum on Thursday, some professionals within the sector have been foreshadowing the promises made by the NDC and the NPP. And they say they are not realistic in the next four years. They say uh, this because of the country's low level of financial mobilization and the impact of COVID-19 on the economy. Before we take a listen to these professionals, here are a number of promises made by the two major political parties in relation to agriculture. So, on the NPP manifesto, the NPP is promising to increase local production of food to enhance food security. It also says it will continue the implementation of the One Village, One Dam community-owned managed irrigation policy and also rehabilitate existing public irrigation schemes, uh, VIA especially, and develop new ones in the North and Afram Plains. The party is also promising to institute anti-dumping measures on poultry and support private sector to expand local production of poultry feed and veterinary products. It's also promising to ensure that cocoa farmers receive increased producer prices plus bonuses to encourage high production volumes and also stable prices protected against exchange rate effects. The MPP says it will provide a framework for smallholder farmers to undertake block farming and providing incentives, including land banks, for large-scale commercial farm investors. It also promises to revive agricultural research at CSIR and facil uh, fac faculties in public universities and provide a framework for smallholder farmers to undertake, as we indicated earlier, and also ensure availability as well as effective and transparent distribution of premixed fuel. Okay, let's turn our attention on the NDC manifesto and what it is promising on agriculture. And it says the next NDC government will digitize agriculture as a game changer to boost productivity and profitability because digital technologies can help farmers and marketers of their produce work more effectively, efficiently, precisely and sustainably. It will also drive greater engagement in agriculture for women and youth create employment opportunities along the value chain and foster a new breed of young ICT agripreneurs. It also intends to reposition agriculture and agribusiness as a key driver for Ghana's economic growth and development. It also promises to establish a cashew development board to coordinate cashew-related issues and use coordinator strategies and investment in agriculture and agribusiness to secure livelihoods and increase prosperity for all Ghanaians. It promises to set agriculture as a central focus of the economic policy by using agriculture as a tool to contribute to managing the exchange rate and increasing direct budget expenditure on agriculture as a share of total budget expenditure from the present 7% to at least 10%. And it is also pledging to double the value of domestic and intra-regional and global export demand in agricultural services, commodities and manufactured products. And will take advantage of the emerging opportunities in ECOWAS and the African sub-region. The NDC is also promising to attract 30% of school leavers into primary agriculture and agribusiness entrepreneurship by providing agronomic and extension services support for production and agro-processing for the youth and operationalizing 60,000 uh, of YEA-supported commercial farms across 
agricultural districts. Now, a senior research fellow at the Institute of Statistical, Social and Economic Research, Dr. Fred Janku, says most of the promises made by the NDC and MPP in the agricultural sector are not achievable in the next four years. According to Dr. Janku, after an analysis of the manifestos of the two parties, it seems to him like the two parties were in a competition on who will make more promises, but not on what is realistic. Dr. Fred Janku spoke at an ISA organized panel discussion on hosting agriculture value chains in the midst of COVID-19 and analyzing political party manifestos. For to say just one sentence about the manifestos, and my apologies to all the other political parties, I was only able to look at the uh, NPP and NDC manifestos because my director said I should speak for 10 minutes, so I couldn't, you know, go into more detail about the other manifestos. Uh, my short conclusion on the manifestos would be that it seems that the parties were probably competing to see who will make the most promises. Uh, there's hardly any focus and we know, and I believe they know, that most of the things that they put there in the manifestos to do in four years, most of them are practically impossible. That's why I said it appears that it's a competition to see who will make the most promises because probably if you make the most promises, it might and near to your advantage in the election. And the, the, the keynote speaker spoke about the need to be focused. We need to focus on what is it that, what is that one, two, or three things that if we do in four years can boost the sector because we can't do everything. I didn't see that. I will just focus because of time on finance because whatever they've said in the manifestos to do without the requisite budget is not going to be possible to do.